So we had a recent question around imaging in our HealthSpan Nation that prompted me to want to bring this to the attention of our YouTube viewers. So if you're confused about DEXAs, how to read DEXAs, what a TBS is, how to understand how a TBS can help you understand DEXA, what a REMS is, how to read a REMS, and then how to compare all three, then you're going to want to pay attention to this video. I have have a, a, a sample of all three of these that I want to go through. They're from different patients, so we're not going to compare one to the other. But I think it's important to understand the principles of each of these, how you can use each of these, because not everybody has access to all three. So stick around. We're going to go through all three of these. We're going to start with DEXA and then kind of work our way through it and then summarize it. But this could be really powerful if you're struggling to understand how to even read your own imaging data and what to do with that information. Okay, so this is an example of something that you would get from your doctor after you had a DEXA scan done. So let me just walk you through what you're seeing. And please understand that all of these reports look differently. So it's important that you understand what to look for. So the areas that we're mostly interested in are spine and femoral neck. Some people use total hip, but you wanna use something, femoral neck, total hip, something around the hip, and then the spine L1 through four, if at all possible. And that's what most of these are gonna do. So you can see that this is, you you have the date when this was delivered, and then you have your AP spine, L1 through 4, femoral neck, and the total hip. A lot of times they'll only report on the left side. We do have both sides in this, but a lot of times the left, for whatever reason, was chosen as the side to, to report. And then here's three really important things. So this is reported in your bone mineral density in grams per centimeter squared. So that's the actual density of your bones. And then you have the T-score, which is a representation of where your bone density is compared to your sex and race. And when you would have within that sex and race had your optimal bone density in your early 20s or early 30s, so your peak bone mineral density. So it is a statistical reference compared to that. And then the Z-score is corrected for your age group now. So this is an age-corrected score. The ones we are most interested in from a diagnosis perspective is T-score. You've heard me talk about the weaknesses of T-score in the past. I won't go into that. But this is a patient who has pretty normal, actually pretty good-looking bone mineral density T-score and Z-score for the hip and then has some osteopenia almost borderline osteoporosis of the spine. People often ask, man, why is it so different? Is that weird? I do think that this probably isn't accurate one way or the other. And generally, osteoporosis is a full body disease. So unless you're not loading one part of your body like you're loading the other, you should see it probably closer. But that being said, this person could have issues with their spine. Actually, I know this patient, so she does. So it's likely that she's not loading her spine as much as she's loading her hips. And so this could be real. There's other ways to look at that. But the other thing that you see here is the FRAX. So FRAX is an online calculator that even if your DEXA score doesn't include it, you can go online, just look up FRAX in Google, and you'll go to the website and you can put in all of your data and you can come up with these numbers yourself. But it gives you the 10-year risk, major osteoporotic fracture and hip fracture. And you can see her scores are relatively low, although even it's uh, with a spine of negative 2.4, her risk over the next 10 years is 7.4%, which isn't that low. Uh, but compared to what it would be if, if she were to dip into the osteoporosis category, you would see that go up significantly. So then with DEXA, People will often use a repeat DEXA to compare their improvement over time. So things to remember here are that DEXA doesn't change very quickly, and there's quite a bit of variation from DEXA to DEXA. So really, it's a plus or minus 6%. So unless you're seeing 6% change in DEXA, you can't be certain that you're actually seeing improvement or worsening at all. 6% could take a couple of years. This is slow to respond. And here's a great example where this is a patient that had a repeat study done at a different center. And so let me show you this first. So this is her comparison of, get this pulled up here, here we go. This is a comparison of two different DEXs. So this is on the same machine at the same center from 2021 to 2024. So I don't know if you can see that there, I can show you. So you can see 2021 to 2024. And so you can see that if you look at bone mineral density, you can see that it got better. So higher is better. And it went from negative three to negative 2.4. So this is one of our patients. She had an improvement of 10% during that time frame. It's awesome, right? But here's the thing. In between here, she had another DEXA done at a different center. So I'm gonna pop back and forth here. But what you can see is if you look at her L1 through four, if you look at the BMD in grams per centimeter squared, it's 0.848 here. So let me go back to the other one. If you go back here, it was 0.712 and it went to 0.785. 
where does 0.848 fit in there? It doesn't. So this is why it's so important that if you're going to repeat a DEXA that you get it done at the same machine, preferably the same person using the machine, but at least the same machine. Because you can see here that if you're trying to calculate off of bone mineral density, her improvement, her improvement would have been massive, but the T score really wasn't that different, right? So she went from negative three to negative 2.8, but it's on a different machine and that's a small difference. So you really can't say that there's much difference there. So do, this is why doing it on the same machine is so critical. And remember this, when we calculate difference, we calculate improvement or worsening, it's based off of the bone mineral density not off of the t-score so if you're just going off of t-score understand that you're going to be missing part of the big picture here okay so another important thing to always make sure that you can get is the actual pictures now you're not going to understand and know what to do with these pictures but your doctor who is interpreting this data should be able to look at this so when i look at these pictures here's some things that i see if you look at the area that they outline you want to make sure that they actually outline the femoral neck and they did a pre pretty reasonable job there sometimes they'll get sections of other pieces of bone or they'll push it too far in you're getting some of the, the pelvis in there and so it's going to be inaccurate if you do that and if you look at the spine here you can see that on the spine image you can see how the spinous processes, which are these little dense things in the middle here, the spinous processes are a little bit off center down low. This means that she has some rotation. Now she could have some scoliosis, this could be right on, uh, but you have to take that into consideration. She also has some degenerative disc disease and you can see how it's kind of a little more protruding out here. So all of that's gonna make a difference. And so this isn't a perfect image, it's not bad though. The other thing I wanna point out here that's important is that the reason why I said you wanna use bone mineral density instead of T-score is that if you notice these lines on this graph, and this graph, I know it's small, I apologize, but the graph for those that are listening to this is green, yellow, red, it gets more red as you go down, and this is your T-score as it goes down. So over time, your bone mineral density could stay the same and your T-score will change. And this is something a lot of people don't understand because the average goes down. So the T-score is going to continue to change over time. Now, the good news is, is if your bone mineral density stays the same, your T-score will actually get better. But that's not really what we're looking for. It's good, better than losing, but our goal is to, to grow bone. And so this is why you want to use bone mineral density instead of T-score to make sure that you're looking very closely at the improvement. Okay, so let's shift away from DEXA here. All right, so let's go to TBS. So TBS stands for trabecular bone score. Now we know that DEXA has weaknesses because DEXA only measures density. And there's that variation that we talked about. One of the reasons why we wanna use other imaging is that there's the need to measure quality of bone. And so density is part of the equation, but quality is part of the equation. And TBS helps us to understand quality to some extent. Now, I don't usually love TBS because it doesn't always give us a great report. This report's actually not bad, but I'll show you why it's not particularly helpful. Okay, so what we see when we look at a TBS score, and they don't all look like this, but basically you're looking at the same kind of T-score chart where you can see that the T-scores are gonna get worse on average over time. And then you see all these kind of color things. And basically what it's doing is it's using the x-ray to try to get a sense of the architecture of the bone. If you look in the down and the bottom right, I'm sorry, bottom left side of this, what you can see is a, a chart. And for those that don't, or that aren't watching this, I can describe it. So basically it's a three by three graph and you have on the left side, your TBS score and on the horizontal, they put it on the top, the T score. So basically what you're asking is what T score classification, normal osteopenia, osteoporosis do you have, and then what TBS score? And so you can have a normal, normal, you can have a normal T score and partially degraded bone, normal T score, degraded bone, and then similarly, normal TBS, osteopenia, normal TBS, osteoporosis, and then all the other variables in there. And so what we're looking at for this particular patient is that she has osteopenia and she has a normal TBS. So that's really good. But what I, the reason why I don't find this to be particularly helpful is that so often I see people have osteopenia or osteoporosis and partially degraded bone. So that doesn't really help me with what to do. It also doesn't change what I'm gonna do. So while this could be helpful, and in this case it is, right? So we're like, hey, look, you are improving your T-score and your bone quality looks pretty good on TBS, that's great. But if it said partially degraded, it wouldn't change my recommendations. I still think we need to improve her bone and continue her on her path. So. It could potentially could be helpful, but we don't necessarily request that people find this because it doesn't necessarily change what we do. Okay, and so lastly, we have REMS. So REMS is an ultrasound device that is becoming more common in the United States, more common in Europe. And REMS is an ultrasound that will give you a T-score, but will also give you a fragility score. So it helps you to understand both quality and quantity. And if we look at the T-score graph, it looks a whole lot like a DEXA graph. 
Um, and what you can see is that you get a T score, you get a Z score and you get a bone mineral density. Now I would not use this bone mineral density to compare it to a DEXA. Like I said, you, even on a DEXA, it needs to be on the same machine. So I would not use the two to compare, uh, from a bone mineral density perspective, you have to use T score if you're going to compare them, but remember that they're different technologies. So I will see a lot of people say, well, I had a DEXA and it showed that it was negative three and I got a REM and it says that I'm a negative two. So I reversed my osteoporosis. Not, not necessarily. You don't have osteoporosis on a REMS, but it doesn't mean that, that the other one doesn't count. So they're both valid technologies. Uh, there's some issues, certainly with DEXA. We have less research on REMS, but REMS seems to be more accurate. And so REMS will give you the T-score and then REMS also gives you this fracture risk. And so if you look here in the bottom, for those that aren't looking at this, it says fracture risk assessment, and it gives you a fragility score hip, five-year risk of hip fracture. And so it gives you a fragility score. I'll show you that on the next page. And then it gives you this risk of hip fracture, or if you're looking at the spine, the risk of spine fracture. What's confusing here is that it says four to eight percent ought. And so if you look on the full report, it'll say this is the percent of fracture out of a thousand, which is a really confusing term. And so this isn't percent, which is usually like four to eight percent, which would be four to eight out of a hundred. This is four to eight out of a thousand. So you have to move the decimal point. This is 0 0.4 to 0.8 percent. So that's something that a lot of even providers who use this screening method don't know, but this is a very, very low risk. And that makes sense because this is a T-score of negative two. And then if we look at the fragility score on the next page. All right. So then we look at the fragility score. What we see is we see that same number, that 25.1 out of hundred. And then you see this graph of age on the bottom fragility score on the uh, Y axis. And you see the, the number based off of age. And then you have a green, yellow, red. All right. So in this green, yellow, red, obviously you want it to be in the green. Green is going to be a better fragility score and then yellow and then red. So our goal is to keep it in the green, the lower, the better. And this fragility score of 25.1 looks pretty good. So this in conjunction with a T score that looks good is really promising from a, a prognostic perspective. Um, and then of course we compare this to all the other data that we have. So that's it. Those are the three modalities that we use from an imaging perspective. So we have DEXA, DEXA with TBS and then REMS. Now, of course, we're also using other things. We're using biomarkers, we're using bone turnover markers. We're using a lot of things to help us determine how these things are going to improve over time. But remember that imaging, even a, a REMS is, isn't really going to have a significant change at the six month mark. We do have some examples, some case examples out here on YouTube of patients that have seen improvements at six months, but I wouldn't expect that as the general rule. So that's why we want to use the bone turnover markers because the imaging isn't going to change that quickly. So bone turnover markers, P1 and P, CTX, a great adjunct to using imaging. I love to get both REMS and DEXA if we can have it. Uh, if we had to choose one, I would choose REMS over DEXA if you have access to it. And that's it for today. If you are interested in joining a group that is using these tools and all the other tools and asking the questions, consider joining our HealthSpan Nation. Our HealthSpan Nation is a group designed just for that. We are improving bone health through the lens of HealthSpan. These are not our patients. These are people that are working on their own, but they're supporting each other within this group. We do have a weekly call with this group. So myself or my team members, if I'm unavailable, and we do a topic-driven Q&A. We also have a content vault full of our previous recordings. And then we also have a, a discount vault for all of the services and products that we have vetted and we're using for our patients that we make available to our HS send members at a discount. So if you're interested in that, take a look for the link in the description below on YouTube or head over to optimalhumanhealth.com slash programs and you'll find it there as well. So this was a review of imaging studies and there are a couple other videos that you might be interested in and those two are right here and right here. I'll see you in the next video.